JBN, we keep you informed. Jamaican Olympian unveils Bolt Nano. Jamaican Olympian Usain Bolt's mobility company has unveiled a two-seater, all-electric and zero-emission vehicle named the Bolt Nano. Hotcars.com reports that the unveiling happened at the VivoTech conference in Paris last Thursday. The Nano, which will begin deliveries next year, is expected to start at U.S. $9,999. Mobility is currently taking refundable deposits of U.S. $999 to reserve a Nano, which is an interchangeable battery. The vehicle, which was launched the same week that the company announced its new e-scooter in Paris, can accommodate a driver in the front and a passenger in the back. Bolt Mobility, a rideshare company, provides carbon-free e-scooters that users can locate via app and pay for through their account in cities around the world. The Nano 2 seater offers great maneuverability in congested areas with limited parking. In fact, four Nano vehicles can fit into a standard parking space. The company's first four-wheeler has been in development for the last two years. Although it's uncertain where the Bolt Nano will be first launched, the company which is established in both the U.S. and Europe says customers can expect to see Nanos in many more markets in the coming months. Youthful role model cut down in Marvely, St. Andrew. People who knew Kirk Blackwood, a 22-year-old resident of Marvely, St. Andrew, for over a year described him as a gentle soul, whose pleasant personality made him a role model for many in the community. But it was his relationship with his girlfriend of the same age that made him the center of admiration to all around him. According to residents, the two were seen on a daily basis heading to and from work. So pleasant was the sight of the two young people that people in the community would normally describe them as the Romeo and the Juliet couple of the community, said a resident there. You'd never see one without the other. They were the perfect example of what two young people in love should look like. They were role models to young people in the community, another resident said. All of that was, however, brought to a crashing end last Saturday, when Blackwood, making his way home from a hard day at work, was chased and shot dead by criminals from the community. The killing has since sent shockwaves across the community and has left many residents there grappling to come to terms with the brutal attack. Reports from the police are that about 3.30 a.m., the young man was walking along the Denver Crescent section of the community when he was approached by a group of armed men. Shortly after, the sounds of gunfire broke the early morning silence. Residents said they heard the young man pleading with his attackers, telling them that he was innocent and that he was a member of the church. His calls for mercy did nothing to stop the criminals. Reports are that he was shot ten times. The police were called and the bullet-riddled body of the young man was found on the road. The police say they are following several leads in relation to the killing, but have remained tight-lipped on their findings so far. However, they have indicated that their presence has since been increased in the community. The police say they are also investigating a case where another teenager was shot in another section of the community a week before. One dead, three injured in North-South Highway crash. The police have released the identity of the man who died in yesterday morning's motor vehicle crash along the north-south highway near Miami Bay in St. Anne. At least three other people were reportedly injured in the crash. The dead man has been identified as 27-year-old Tafai White, a taxi operator of Florentino Drive in Angels Phase 2 St. Catherine. Reports from the police's corporate communications unit are that about 1 a.m., White was driving a Mazda motor car heading towards Miami Bay. He collided into the rear of a trailer that was disabled in the left lane of the highway. White sustained injuries and was taken to the hospital where he was pronounced dead. NWC imposes island-wide water restrictions. The National Water Commission, NWC, has imposed a number of restrictions for its customers across the island, effective May 24. NWC in an advertisement placed in the Jamaica Observer yesterday said a deficiency in the supply of water owing to drought affecting sections of the island, has forced the entity to employ more stringent water conservation measures. NWC is prohibiting island-wide irrigation and watering of gardens, lawns, grounds, and farms, refilling or supplying of tanks, ponds, or swimming pools, and or for use other than normal domestic services, such as drinking, cooking, washing, bathing, and sanitation, 
washing of vehicles by hose, watering or washing roadways, pavements, paths, garages, or outrooms, any purpose which may require the use of a considerable or excessive quantity of water. NWC said the restrictions will remain in place until further notice. While the prohibition is in effect, no person shall use or cause or permit to be used any water supplied by or obtained from the pipes of NWC for any of the purposes specified in the notice, the NWC advertisement said. The commission said a breach of these restrictions will result in a fine or 30 days imprisonment. Road fatalities up by 21% so far this year. The Road Safety Unit, RSU, is reporting a 21% increase in road fatalities and a 28% increase in fatal crashes in Jamaica since the start of the year when compared to the corresponding period last year. Statistics released from the RSU yesterday indicated that 167 persons have been killed in 152 fatal crashes. Vulnerable road users, pedestrians, pedal cyclists, motorcyclists, and pillion account for 63% of the road users killed since January, while motorcyclists account for 32%, pedestrians 22%, passengers 21%, private motor vehicle drivers 16%, and private motor vehicle passengers 14%. At the same time, St. Catherine account for 17% of road users killed the largest figure since the start of the year. The RSU is appealing to all road users to wear their seatbelts, helmets, and other protective devices to save lives, as well as to pay close attention to road signs and markings. 113 farm workers off to Canada. A total of 113 Jamaicans left the island Tuesday for Canada under the Seasonal Agriculture Workers Program, more popularly called Farmer Program. The Ministry of Labor's Overseas Employment Centre in downtown Kingston hosted a send-off ceremony for the workers before they departed. Among those in attendance were Labour Minister Shahini Robinson, Canada's Minister of Immigration, Refugees and Citizens, Hamad Hussain, and the Canadian High Commissioner to Jamaica, Laurie Peters. Eleven of the workers were first-time participants in the 53-year-old program. The oldest among the overall group was 65-year-old Michael Gray, while the youngest was 23-year-old Siobhan Thompson, who is among the first-timers. According to Robinson, the farmer program with Canada benefits every family and community in Jamaica. Stressing what she said was the importance of ensuring that the rights of the Jamaican workers were protected, Robinson explained that government representatives of both Canada and Jamaica, along with non-government organizations, NGOs, and employers, meet each year to discuss the terms and conditions for the workers. She said, we seek to guarantee at all times that the labor standards governing employment on these farms are enforced. Most importantly, we take into consideration the safety and well-being of our farm workers. Robinson implored the workers traveling for the first time to learn from the experienced members who will be traveling with them. She also encouraged them to respect authority and carry out their respective tasks diligently and professionally. According to Usain, Jamaica was the first country to sign a farmer agreement with Canada, and he said the island's workers have made tremendous contributions to Canada's economy throughout the program. He said that over 10,000 workers are involved in the program annually. Hussein noted that the two countries share strong bonds among governments, businesses, family, and friends. He said a growing and vibrant Jamaican community in Canada, which numbers over 300,000 people, also helps to maintain the vital links between Canada and Jamaica. We're also pleased that many people from this country are visiting family members and friends in Canada and studying at Canadian colleges and universities. Last year, more than 405,000 Jamaicans visited Canada as tourists and more than 3,500 pursued long-term studies in Canada, Hussein said. In the meantime, first-time participant Thompson said after the ceremony that he was nervous but hoping for the best. Thompson is from Sanguinetti Clarendon and lives with his mother and sister, is optimistic that the program will impact his life positively. He said, I think this will impact me in a positive way. It is the only option I see right now to improve certain things in my life. JBN 
we keep you informed. Please remember to like, subscribe, share, leave us a comment and click the notification bell to receive our daily news items.